Welcome to part two in this series of videos where I'm trying to add audio to this scene, uh, which is the Sun Temple. This is a high quality asset on the Unity Asset Store by Sandro T. And up until recently, it had absolutely no sound in it whatsoever. And in the first video, I added uh, sounds to these uh, roaring fires that are all over the scene. And in this video, I'm going to be adding uh, environment sound effects for all, all of the movement in the scene. So there's these rustling trees, there's this grass, you can see these clouds moving. Um, I want to create a bed of audio that sits underneath everything else that's going on that basically just connects up what you can see with what you can hear. Uh, so you see rustling grass, you hear rustling grass. Uh, and I want to just create uh, a bit of ambience about the scene. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm also going to set up an audio mixer to start to control some of the audio in this scene. And along with that, I'm going to create an audio zone for inside uh, the buildings. You can go inside a lot of these buildings. And I want the audio to be different when you do that. So I've got this sample. So this came from uh, Sonus's 2018 GDC giveaway. It's uh, a Desert Wind Loop by Sound Rangers. Um, so I'm going to use this. Now this is great, it's already a loop, it's an appropriate length for something that's going to be playing all the time, it's a minute long. Um, but what I don't want is all of that low end rumble. Really I just want the rustling in, in the higher end of that, that to match up with these trees, this grass, that sort of thing. So I'm going to change that with EQ and I'm going to do that in Audacity. So I'm just going to drop it into Audacity. I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to select the whole thing, click Effect, Equalization, and you can see I've already done this when I was prepping this video. Usually it starts out like this, so I'm just going to grab this around about 300 hertz and drop it down a bit. Let's say minus six and grab another point. And I'm actually gonna put this above uh, zero dB, so it's gonna be a slight boost. And we can see what this sounds like. Okay, I might actually drop that a bit lower to 12. Okay, and that's more when I want, where I want it. So I'm going to press OK. Um, now this was a loop, but because I've changed it with EQ, I have changed the audio wave. I've changed the way this, this is made up. So this may not loop anymore. Now to fix that, I need to create the loop again. I'm just going to use the same method I did as I did in the last video, uh, which is I'm going to select a section at the start, cut it, paste it, move it to the end and overlap it and then select across these two effect crossfade clips what have I done wrong let's try that again I must have had something selected ah crossfade tracks not clips uh, constant power one, okay, and then that's good. So that should now loop again. Select it all, change the sample rate to 44.1 kilohertz because I don't want 96, it's too high, and export as 16 bit WAV file. I'm just going to call this my wind loop. Stereo file, yeah, we want stereo file. Okay, so that's good. Don't need to save it. Okay, so I'm going to create an audio object for this to sit on. And I'm going to create it on the camera. I'm going to create it as a child of the camera. Uh, purely so I can find it easily. There's no need to do this. Um, I just want to be able to find it without searching around at the scene. I'm going to call it ambient audio. I'm going to add a component 
all your source. And I need to import my clip into the audio folder I set up last time. There we go. And I'm just going to drag that to there. Okay, so plan awake, yes. Loop, yes. And it is 2D. And I'm going to keep it 2D. So when I was prepping for this video, I was, I was tempted to try and create some sort of environment audio that uh, had some sort of 3D positioning when you moved and turned on the spot, that sort of thing. Uh, but I don't actually think that's necessary here. I think for this type of project, it's not VR, it's not, say, ambisonic audio, it's not something that needs a uh, very precise uh, correlation to where your head is. I think it's okay to have uh, the audio just sit underneath everything else um, as a 2D sound. So I'm just going to leave that as 2D uh, and I'm going to have other 3D sounds in the scene create the sense of, of 3D positioning, so the fires, um, these, these tough ones when we get to it, and any other sounds I put in. Okay, so that's the wind sound effect. I don't just want that though, I want to create an element of variation, so I'm going to add in some crickets. I have a cricket loop here. So this is the sound that I made for my Pro Ambience asset that sits on the asset store. Um, and it's already ready, it's 44.1 kilohertz, it's 16 bit, and it loops. So I'm just gonna drag that into the project. And I'm gonna create another audio source on this same object, and I'm going to add the clip. I'm gonna set it to loop. I am gonna set it to play on wake, but I'm gonna turn the volume down to zero. So on this, I want, I, I want to have this fade in and fade out in, in random intervals throughout the game. So I don't want it just statically there, I want it to come up, I want it to come down. Uh, and I'm going to write a script to do that. Okay, so I'm going to create a script to control the volume of the crickets. I'm just going to call it Crickets Audio. And I'm going to open that. And the first thing I need to do is declare some variables. So I need a public audio source. I'm call that crickets audio source. Public float fade time. And I'm just going to set this at five seconds. Uh, now I need to create some minimum and maximum values for the random ranges. So I want it to be off for a random amount of time, on for a random amount of time, and at a random volume between certain levels. So for each of those, I'm going to create a minimum and maximum, and then a value to hold whatever's next. Uh, so I'm going to type public float min time off equals 5, max time off equals 15, uh, and then float time off, and that's the value we'll use in the script. So I'm going to do the same for on, so public float min time on equals 5, max time on equals 15, float time on. And then for volume, public float min vol equals 0 0.5, I think we'll go for, max volume equals 1, and pub, uh, not public floats crickets vol and that's what we'll use in the script itself there we go errors all over the place okay i need another public float uh, so this is a timer i'm going to use like a stopwatch just to keep track of how much time has passed and time till next event. And this will just keep track of when the next thing needs to happen. And one boolean, bool, crickets, playing. And that's just so I can keep track of whether they should be on or off. So now I've got my variable set up, I need to create a function to randomize these values whenever I want. So I'm going to, at the bottom of the script, type void, ran 
optimize values. And I'm just going to set all of these to random amounts between these ranges. So I'm going to type time off equals random dot range between min time off and max time off. And then I'm going to do the same for the others. So time on, this is something that is random between the minimum time on and maximum. And cricket's volume is random between minimum and max. You get the idea. So when the script starts, the first thing I want it to do is to randomize the values. So it needs to set amounts for each of these. And then I want it to set the time till next event equals to be whatever time off is, because I want this to start off. So I want it to wait as long as the first random amount is until it starts. The next thing I need to do is create a function that fades the audio between zero and the volume it's been set to to fade up to. Uh, now there are a number of ways to do this. You could do this with audio mixer snapshots uh, and that would be fine. What I'm going to do, however, is I'm just going to lerp the volume value of the audio source between zero and wherever I want it to be over the duration. Uh, and I'm going to do that with a coroutine. So I'm going to type i enumerator fade crickets. I want this to take a few values. So I want this to take a float start value, float end value, and the duration I want it to take. Okay, so to do this, I need to declare a float current time equals zero. And then while current time is less than or equal to the duration, I want to run through this while loop. I'm going to change the crickets audio source dot volume to mathf dot lerp start value comma end value comma parentheses current time divided by duration close parentheses close them again and semicolon to end so what this is doing is it smoothly moves between one value and another over a duration of time while this condition is true. And that's what we're going to use to create this simple fade. Uh, what we do have to add to this, however, is we have to update this every frame with the time. So I'm going to put, not cricket, current time plus equals time dot delta time yield return null. I think that's the right way to end a coroutine. If it's not, let me know in the comments. Tell me, tell me the right way to do it. So I now need to put all of this in update. So the first thing I'm going to do is set this stopwatch. So timer plus equals time dot delta time. So this is just going to keep adding up time every frame. And then if the timer is greater than the time till next event, do something. So if crickets are already playing, do something. Else if crickets are not playing, 
do something else. So I want to start the coroutine called fade crickets with the parameters start value of zero because that's what it's going to be anyway. Um, an end value of whatever the cricket volume is going to be and the fade time, which we have already set to be five seconds. And I'm going to set crickets playing to true because they are now. Oh, I missed a parenthesis. That's why nothing's completing correctly. And I'm going to randomize the values again so that they are random for next time. And then I'm going to change the time till next event to be time on plus the fade time. So we can copy this and use it in the other condition. So if the crickets are already playing, we want to fade them to zero. We want to fade them from whatever volume they're already at. So crickets audio source dot volume to zero. Same fade time. Crickets playing to false because they're not anymore. Randomize the values again. And time till next event, we're going to change till time off plus the fade time. And after all of this, we must set the timer to zero. Okay, so I'm back in Unity and I need to connect my Cricut's audio source to my script. But other than that, this should all work correctly now. So let's try that. So at 11 seconds, this should fade in. And it does, fantastic. Let's just make sure it fades out as well. So what I want to do now is I want to control the levels. Uh, now that I've got a few audio sources set up. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to use an audio mixer. So I'm going to add a mixer. I'm just going to call it audio mixer. Now I'm going to split the audio into different groups as I work on this. I'm going to create another group on this main audio mixer. I'm going to call that outside audio. And now I'm going to create another audio mixer called outside mixer. What I need to do is grab this and drag it onto the audio mixer and that is going to feed it into one of these groups and I need to feed it into the outside audio group that I just set up. So this mixer outside audio feeds into this group on the main audio mixer. And then on this outside mixer, I'm going to create the separate groups for different types of audio that I want to control balances for. So I'm going to create one for fires one for wind. And when you're creating these, don't be sure to not just keep hitting the plus button because what happens then is you get, like I've just done here, uh, you get a group that's nested from a group. So this, as it is now, would feed into this, which then feeds into that. Uh, I don't want that. I want these two to be separate. So I'm just going to grab it back to the master and make it its own group and just feed straight to the top. OK, so now I need to route audio to the groups I've just set up. So I'll find my ambient audio objects. So wind loop, that's going to go to the wind group. Crickets loop, that's going to go to the crickets group. And if you watched the first video, you'll remember that I created these on a prefab, the bonfire prefab, which I'm going to select. So with that selected, I can output to the fires group. Let's make sure that works. Okay, so I've got, yeah, so fires is working, wind is working, cricket's working. So this is a good chance for me to balance these 
So I'm going to edit and play mode. And I'm going to turn these crickets way down because they're too loud. To about, yeah, minus 15 sounds good. And the wind's probably a bit loud as well, so I'm going to drop that down to minus 7. And because uh, audio mixes are, are assets, when I'm clicking edit and play mode, these, these changes are permanent. Drop a bit further, actually. These changes are going to be set, so just be mindful of, of what you change when you edit and play mode. It stays. So, why use this method? Why have two mixers instead of just one big mixer with lots of groups on it. Well, if I say added three snapshots to this mixer, say if I had one mixer and all the groups were on that, you have to change all of these initial values for every snapshot if you want to keep them the same when you change them. Whereas now I've got a dedicated mixer for balancing and then I've got my main mixer which I'm going to use to, to hold the different settings for the different states the last thing I'm going to do is I want to change how the audio sounds when you walk into buildings. On the audio mixer, so this main mixer, um, I'm going to create a second snapshot. I'm going to call it inside building. And I'm going to go to the first snapshot and rename it default snapshot because I don't want to confuse myself later on. When I'm inside a building, and I can do this with the audio on. I'm going to want to reduce the volume slightly, and I also want to uh, I want to take some of the top end of it off. So this is so this is like uh, audio occlusion. Um, I, I'm just mimicking that, but with a filter. So all I'm going to do to do that is add an effect to the outside audio group, and I'm going to add a low pass effect. And that's what I want. You can hear straight away it's taking some of the edge off. I'm going to leave it at the default of 5000 hertz, um, but if I turn it down, you can hear what it does to it. But I don't want it as, as extreme as that. So that's with this inside building snapshot selected. I'm going to also reduce the volume down to, say, minus 10. I need to return to the default snapshot and put the frequency up. So this effect is having it's affecting both snapshots. So I need to put this up to neutralize the effect of it um, at 22 kilohertz. It's the top end, so it's it's cutting off nothing, basically. And now if I switch between the two, you can hear the difference. So how this works is each building that has an interior has an exposure area collider on it which talks to an exposure area manager script uh, and this is being used to change the brightness level when you are in and out of buildings. So this functionality of changing something when you go into a building already exists. So all I'm going to do is, um, is extend that to include mixer snapshots as well. So I need to find these two scripts. These aren't prefabs, the, the exposure areas. However, there are no settings on the scripts. I can just change the scripts and it will update all of them. Um, so I've already got the exposure area manager selected. So I'm just going to open that script. I'm going to open one of the exposure areas as well. Let's just select this one since we're here. There we go open that too. Right, so I'm going to select the manager script. Before I do anything, I need to add using Unity Engine dot audio namespace. Um, so that when I start talking about audio mixer snapshots, it actually knows what I'm talking about. I'm then going to add two public audio mixer snap snapshots variables. One called default snapshots and one called inside snapshot and then I'm also going to add a public int called zone counter 
Okay, so variables are set up. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the script and I'm going to add a public function. I'm going to call it update audio zone. So this is the function I'm going to call from the exposure areas whenever you enter or leave uh, one of the exposure area trigger zones. So I'm going to save that and I'm just going to go back into Unity and connect up the snapshots. So I need to find the exposure manager again. Here it is. So I'm just going to use circle select for these. I want the default snapshot to be default snapshot. And I want the inside snapshot to be the inside building snapshot. I now want the exposure area to register when you're entering and leaving. And I'm going to do this with a counter. The reason I'm going to do this is because if you have two primitive colliders next to each other, if they overlap slightly, what you can have is it registers the enter when you walk into it, it registers the enter of the second zone when you walk into that, and then it registers the exit of the first zone when you exit that. So if they're overlapping at all, you can exit a trigger zone while you're still inside of another one. It doesn't treat it as one combined zone. And yes, you can do this with mesh colliders and, and other things, but I found this to be a very simple solution. So if you walk into the zone plus one, if you walk into another zone plus another one, so two, then if you trigger an exit minus one, it's still one. So long as it's over zero, you're inside the zone. Uh, and that's the system I use just to create a, you're either inside or you're outside system with primitive colliders. And that's what I'm gonna set up on this now. So I'm gonna open that script and you can see there's already on trigger enter and on trigger exit events. So when you enter one of these triggers, I'm going to have it increase. So I'm going to type exposure manager dot instance dot zone counter and just increase it by one. And then when you exit. I'm going to have it decrease it by one. And then while we're here, we can call the trigger to uh, update the audio zone. So exposure, oh dear. exposure manager dot instance dot update audio zone brackets, parentheses even. So it will change the zone counter and then update it. And we haven't written that part of it yet. But that's what we're going to do next. So save that, return to the manager script, and now we're going to put the functionality in here. So every time it updates, it's going to do something. So if the zone counter is higher than zero, oops, higher than zero, then you're inside, you're inside a building. Inside snapshot dot transition to and we're just, I'm just going to type the fade time as one there we go so if the zone count is higher than zero you're inside transition to the inside snapshot else if it's not Default snapshot dot transition to one second. So save that. So let's test this and see if it works. So we have 3D fire sounds that we already set up in the last video. Uh, rustling ambience, uh, trees grass, wind, that sort of thing. Hear crickets that fade in and out at random intervals. And now if we want to enter one of these buildings, all of that will drop away 
cutting the high frequencies and dropping the volume. Just like that. And then when we leave again, it comes back up. So that's the end of this part. Uh, in the next video I'm going to be looking at footstep sounds and player sounds and reverb for inside the buildings because they're a different type of space and create a different type of sound. Uh, I'll be putting all that together uh, in the next video. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you found this useful let me know. Give it a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to know when the next video is coming out. Or leave a comment if you want to see anything specific or have done something wrong or anything else you want to tell me. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.